Welcome to the demo of Cisco Secure Endpoint. Cisco Secure Endpoint combines behavioral um, analytics, uh, machine learning, and signatures uh, to keep advanced threats from compromising your endpoint, and also give you a visualization of forensic information uh, at your fingertips. So with SecureX and other integrations, uh, we can get richer and actionable information a better context with expanded insight from Talos and third-party uh, sources. Um, you also benefit from more automation and more efficiency, and most importantly, uh, you can easily gain control over the threat landscape on your endpoints. So let's take a look at um, uh, the dashboard. Um, so um, dashboard provides us a, a quick overview of your current state, including um, compromises, and uh, quarantines and vulnerabilities that's detected um, with a um, timeline down below. Um, also, um, you can see that um, you know that the, there's a heat map, right? So with each of the categories and where um, you know the um, endpoints are grouped uh, per your need, um, you can either do that based on a um, location or user type or operating system or policies or etc. Um, so here you can see that we have audit and uh, protect uh, triage and also um, um, endpoint isolation. Um, so as the name suggests, endpoint isolation allows you to uh, isolate endpoints that have been compromised and uh, prevent threats from uh, spreading further. Um, so you can also see um, how many endpoints you have and how, how many of them are compromised. And um, as well as for quarantined endpoints, you know, how many of them and how many um, endpoints that are that has vulnerabilities. Um, also, you can see down below that we have a threat rate um, analysis. So this is where, um, you know, unknown files are sandboxed uh, to determine their disposition. Uh, there are um, times where uh, disposition might change, uh, say, from unknown uh, to bad. Uh, which is, you know, um, determined to be malicious. So the file could be, um, you know, would be quarantined as soon as we know it's malicious. But we also would like you to know uh, which host had uh, had this file, and uh, so that you you might want to go, um, you know, and take a deeper dive over there and uh, probably do some mitigation if needed. Um, and uh, also down below, you can see uh, significant uh, compromised artifacts. And you can drill into uh, details in them and also compromise event types um, that uh, are already prioritized for uh, for you. And also you can see number of uh, event types that falls into that category. And uh, let's take a uh, quick look at uh, vulnerabilities. So uh, vulnerabilities uh, give us a, um, um, a um, you know, you know, coming from integrations with um, you know, Talos as well as um, AMP, you know, um, you know, uh, we, we, we already know that what software um, are vulnerable and which endpoints they're on. Um, so we can look, we can see that um, these are the software that's running on the endpoints. Um, and we can also see their, the version of the software as well as how many uh, vulnerabilities are identified um, as well as the time identified and also the uh, CS, um, uh, CVSS score that's associated. Um, also, you would know the file name that's, um, you know, um, uh, to be blamed for the vulnerability. And uh, you, what I want to show is that you can easily export this to CSV. So you can uh, either work offline or you can uh, um, share it to your uh, patching team uh, to, to patch the softwares. Um, Let's go quickly go back to um, the dashboard, and I want to um, show you, you know, as you can see, you know, compromise event types. You know, what are the events, right? So we can, if we want to see more about events, we can go to the event tab here. So event tab give us a uh, running list of events, um, and also provide, you know, you know, and you know, the actionable information about these uh, detections. Um, as you notice, we can uh, apply filters that helps us to see events that we need. Um, you know, many uh, options here, but I want to filter maybe by indication of comprom uh, compromise. 
Um, and it automatically populate all the subcategories for us and you can easily remove, um, you know, if you you don't care about one of them. Um, and also down below, you can uh, change the time range. Uh, let's change it to 30 days. You can also sort by, you know, many things. Let's sort by file, right? And also you can uh, subscribe uh, to, uh, to, to this um, report and, uh, you know, you can get like a hourly update if you want to, and you can get an immediate, um, you know, a notification um, or, you know, one, one email per event. And you can also save the filter for later use. Um, so let's say, um, you know, uh, we are looking for one of these um, events. Let's see uh, this one, right, for example, and we can see all the details about this, right? So which host is, in, uh, is involved? And uh, what what is uh, detected, and whether um, you know the, the the severity of it, whether it's critical, medium, uh, or high or low. Uh, we can also see the uh, event type and the time detected um, with the file that's involved, and we can see, hey, it's a clean file, but you know it's identified as as critical, right? So let's so you know that want me to you know make me want to take a deeper dive into this event to see what's actually going on, right? So we can see two buttons here. So one is a file trajectory and one is device trajectory. Let's take a look at file trajectory first. So file trajectory actually, um, you know, give us a, um, you know, shows the whole life cycle of each file that's in your environment from where it was first observed to where it was last seen, as well as uh, which hosts were involved um, you know, um, that, that it landed on. And, um, you know, you can also easily identify like, you know, uh, patient zero um, and, um, you know, parent files, you know, where who created this file and dropped the file droppers and also um, URLs that's involved in all those um, useful contexts. And um, um, so let's say, for example, this file, you know, the, the CMD was, in, uh, was, uh, was clean, but, you know, it, later on, um, as we can see, after CMD was run, it actually uh, dropped this malicious file um, onto the host. So, you know, um, so that's why it was identified. And um, over here, we can take some quick actions right here. Right? And as you can see, that virus total saw that, um, you know, uh, think it's malicious because 60 out of 70 AVs uh, thought so. And uh, over here, we can take some really quick actions, right? We can do some further investigate with threat response. And, um, you know, we can um, block the file or allow or, you know, we can uh, use a SecureX orchestration uh, to block on firepower or, you know, we can take a forensic snapshot uh, or, um, you know, um, other things uh, as well as working with, um, you know, more investigation with the um, threat grid as well as uh, umbrella. So, um, also, um, you know, I what I want to you know, so yeah, so so basically, you can see that you know through the file trajectory, we actually, you know, um, can um, you know put the whole story about how the malicious file got into your environment, uh, pieced together in front of your eyes, right? So you can take uh, quick actions right here. So that's what I really want to show you. And let's go back to um, the dashboard. And uh, I want to quickly pivot into inbox because we saw that, you know, there were actions that we're supposed to take, right, immediately. So, you know, so in the inbox, we can see that most um, information is uh, same as what we see in the main dashboard. But, but you know, the uh, it shows you details about the actions that you need to take, right? So, and over here, we can see that there are, um, you know, you can actually sort these, um, you know, um, items by severity as well. So let's do that. And um, you can see that it's broken down for you into, um, you know, the, all the events into the host that's involved as well as, you know, uh, um, broke, breaks down into the severity of the event, right? So critical, high, medium, low. Um, let's uh, pro that, let's uh, maybe pick one of these, right? And you can see all the details about, you know, the host name, the operating system, and, um, you know, the day that's, identified and process ID and all that information and which group and policy this falls into, uh, where it was last seen and all that. So, you know, but, you know, uh, but what's uh, most uh, interesting um, and I would like to show you is the device trajectory, right? So this is the other button that we saw a while ago. So device trajectory give us an overview of all the events 
uh, the endpoint had seen or performed in the past 30 days. And over here, we can see that, um, you know, we can apply a filter and in the filter, we can see, you know, um, all the files that got created, uh, copied or moved or executed on the file and you can filter by activity on the host. And you can also filter by system, disposition, flags, file type and all that. Um, and um, you can also search. And down below, this is actually a timeline, right? So with, you know, in the past 30 days, and you can see the red dots. Those are indication of uh, um, compromise and the compromise events. The bigger the dots, the more events that's associated. Let's look at the first one, right? And you can see that um, the indication of compromise is already highlighted for you here. So um, let's pivot into the first one. Uh, this is really a uh, PowerShell being used as a dropper. And uh, it basically downloaded uh, resume.exe from this URL. See, um, all of that detail is shown for you. And then this, this file, resume.exe, was dropped and then executed by uh, the PowerShell, right? So and over here, it's um, it was executed, and you can even see the command line that's used uh, to execute, and uh, it was dropped into um, John Doe's desktop, and you can also see you know how long this and this uh, was ran, and over here we can see that hey this file was actually sent to be analyzed, um, and uh, found to be malicious by uh, ThreatGrid, and then later on, it was quarantined, right? Because threat grid came back and said 100, which means this is definitely malicious. Um, and uh, it was quarantined, right? So everything above 90, we quarantine them, right? So over here, you can, you know, just like everywhere else, we also, we always have this pivot uh, menu, right? So you can take all different kinds of actions, like I showed you before. Um, so but what I want to show you is, you know, if you want to do a further investigation, uh, with, let's say, um, you know, threat grid, you know, you want to do a file analysis, you can click on that. And then you will get into this file analysis um, that, that give you, um, you know, full analysis. And you can also um, submit it for analyze, uh, for it to be analyzed. You know, you can choose different uh, VM image. Um, and then all you need to do is say fetch and send for analysis. So that is all of this demo and I hope you 